what's going on YouTube? This is the Common Sense Professor. Today we're going to take a moment to look at compare instructions. Now this is the first of two videos. We're going to look at some of the compare instructions, but not all of them today. So I've got a simple program that I'm using that I built on from the last video where I'm just simply counting up on a couple of counters because I'm going to be using these accumulator values to show you how compare functions work. I've also got a reset that's going to reset both of my counters. All this is going to be going through my emulate PLC. Now under compare we have several different compare instructions that we can choose from. We're going to be looking today at our equal block, our not equal block, less than, greater than, and then less than or equal to and greater than or equal to. Now I'm not going to go in a lot of detail about the different instructions because they all basically work the same. And it's pretty simple as far as what an equal to, a not equal to, less than, greater than, less than or equal to and greater than instruction does. So let's start with an equal to. Now the thing to remember about these instructions is that the way that they work is you have two sources, source A and source B. And what this instruction does is if source A is equal to source B, it gives you a high out. I'm going to add a light here. I've already created the tag for it. That's going to turn on whenever this instruction goes true. So what I want to do to start with is I'm going to say whenever count one accumulator is equal to count two accumulator, we're going to turn a light on. So under this question mark, I'm going to double click this and then I'm going to find my C1 accumulator. And then I will find my C2 accumulator for source B. Now let's download this. Let's watch how this works. I'm going to actually enter an accumulator value of 1 to start with so that they will not be equal when it downloads. Notice I have 1 and 0 here, and I'm looking at that same number in my equal to compare block. So let's add a couple to the first one. Again, if you skip my last video and need to know how counters work, you can go back and look. Let's add some to our second one. And when we get to 5, watch what happens. turn our light on at 5. Those two are equal. If I continue to count the 6, it turns my light back off until they are equal again. And that's the way an equal to block works. Now something else that you can do with this, let me go offline a second, is you might want to say that whenever this CTU is equal to 5, you want to turn a light on. And so under source B, instead of choosing a tag, you can actually enter a value. So you can enter 5 in for that, for your source B. Now when we increment the counter and we get the 5, it turns on our light. So really what this does is we don't have to use a done bit with these compare blocks. So let's reset these. Now again, our not equal to, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than equal to compare functions all operate the same way. One thing to keep in mind is whenever you deal with analog signals, the equals to block is basically pointless. So you can also look at analog signals and say whenever you have an analog signal that is greater than 50, then you're going to turn on a light. You can do this for alarms like low, low alarms, low alarms, high alarms, high, high alarms. You can use compare functions and look at your analog signal and then manually enter in the source B for when you want the alarm to come on. Because an analog signal will hardly ever be equal to 5, for instance, they're almost useless. You always want to use greater than greater than or equal to, less than or less than or equal to for analog signals. Now let's do something a little different. Let's look at a way that we can make a heartbeat circuit. And again, if, if you don't know how to do a heartbeat circuit, go back and watch my videos. 
or we're going to do a heartbeat circuit to blink a light with only one timer using compare blocks. So I'm going to delete all my O tags. Then I'm going to bring one rung to have a timer that's going to blink a light at half a second. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do the first rung of my heartbeat circuit, but that's all I'm going to do. So I'm going to create a new tag. I'll call this T1. Hit create. Now if I want this to blink for half a second, I have to enter twice the amount of preset value, and I'll explain why in a minute. So for half a second, I'm going to do a full second for my preset value. This is going to be T1 done because this timer is going to cycle off itself. So when I download this, the timer will start because that's an XIO. Once it reaches 1,000, it gets a done bit. It's only going to pulse for a millisecond. You will never see it pulse, but it'll pulse enough to reset my timer and start timing again. So this is just constantly going to cycle over and over again for one second. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a compare function and I'm going to say whenever it's greater than 500. So I'm going to be looking at my timer accumulator, t1.acc, and whenever it's greater than 500, I'm going to turn on my light at that point. And I'll just make this a base bit just so you can see that it does turn on. Let's download this. You can see that this timer is constantly recycling itself, 0 to 1,000, and whenever it's 500 to 1,000, it turns this light on. So it's blinking this light at half a second intervals. So this is a simplified heartbeat circuit that we talked about under cascading timers. So that's basically all there are to compare blocks. They're real simple blocks. Again, in the next video, we'll look at the limit block and the compare block. So I hope this has helped. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments below. Have a good day.